Here we are. Registration. We're in uh, Dunster, which is right next to Minehead. And uh, there's the camp and look right by the start line. It was super confusing when registering. They're talking about shuttle buses with camping. You can't camp with. I don't know, you can't camp with a partner or anything, you just got to do it by yourself, which seems a bit lame if you're traveling as a pair and one person supporting you, but so we didn't decide to camp because of the restrictions, but um, yeah, apparently the camping's there. Uh, didn't know that, I couldn't make sense of it online. So here's the start and finish. Uh, there's the Dunster Castle, look. Just up there. So these did a, uh, a race coast to coast to uh, I think Exeter or something, uh, or like a one-way race. But this is the first time this one's run. That's going to be interesting. There's a 10k. I think two 25k's, which are both one way and the 50k which is the whole shebang We're doing the 50k today or tomorrow and it's on saturday a saturday race which is a bit rare in the uk usually that sunday but we're going to set off at 7 a.m i think they said something like if you don't set off at seven and you want to win you can't uh, something like that so so you can start all the way up till nine but then you're not in contention so again, another little thing there, but it's probably because uh, the wind has gone gun time, not chip time. But here we go, registration. They even got porta potties, look. Hey. It's alright, isn't it? There we go. Okay, re registration. Uh, what was uh, EA. Uh, EA. Yeah. Yeah. So we just registered. I got this. Uh, I got this buff here, orange buff. I got a little map, which I'll show you the elevation. Look right here. Little bump, big bump, and a mini end bump. So it should be fun. And there's free tea and coffee. Look, even a packet pickup. You can get some milk. Look as well. Lots of milk, and even some almond milk. Uh, you can go to the toilet, drop your bag off. So I dropped my bag off the day before. Yeah. <laughs> and there's the start line. Okay, well, we got the tea. Don't need the tea, but I mean, you can't refuse the tea. So here we go. Let's look at the start line. So this is where we'll be at 7 a.m. in the morning. There's a big open corral look in here. It's all very standard. There's the uh, track. Look, nice bit of long grass. Uh, I guess they're the masters of timing in there. Photo opportunity. And here's the start, look. You go through here, and it heads directly to Dunster Castle, and then you go off on a 50k. Or maybe even a 10k, because I think that's uh, a new distance to 10k. All right, see you tomorrow. These are the paid for chips, look. Passion card accepted. Yeah, I think I... All right, let's go. Morning, husband. Good morning. You look ready. I got in bed. <laughs> I was going to get 11 hours of sleep. <laughs> Somehow I ended up getting Pipe just dream. over six. <laughs> it's a mystery how that happens, isn't it? <laughs> Always seems to be the case. We're at the Premier Inn. Oh, yes, we are. So, just under two miles away. Nice warm up for your race, huh? For your 50k. And you can. <laughs> five pounds, why? <laughs> I like why? how you're gonna do an extra four miles today to save five pounds on parking. The race is over 100 pounds. Do you really need five extra pounds? <laughs> it's like 130, and that's with the discount. <laughs> so, my biggest middle finger to you is me walking four miles. <laughs> 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 save five pounds? You happy about your choice? You're sweating. <laughs> you haven't even gotten to the start line. One minute before the start. 
But uh, you're five pounds. <laughs> uh, stubborn, as always. <laughs> Go! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bye, husband. <laughs> Okay, so here we are. This is the start area. Now, it's a bit annoying because when I registered for this race, it said your start time is 7 to 7.15. So I'm thinking, oh great, you know, just arrive anywhere within 7 to 7.15. Uh, turns out I missed the start of the race. I can't even start till 7.30. Uh, I asked the woman what was up and she just shrugged at me. So, uh, <laughs> pretty bad. But I spoke to the race director and she cleared it up and she just said, everything's on chip time, you know, it doesn't matter. So, uh, yeah, it's fine. I, I think I think if you want information, just speak to the director, then you kind of get what you want. But the, I guess the other people don't really know the details or anything. <coughs> so we have the tea and coffee we had yesterday. And uh, over here, it looks like we actually have hot food. Look, see, look, breakfast. Let's see what there is. Oh, okay. I guess it's not included. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, see what it's like then. Thank you. There's the food. We got some extra stuff today. Look, custard creams and new bourbons. Some little cakes. Haribo. Might take one of those. And uh, little candies. Look, and bananas. So we're at the start line now. Here, look, a little bit of tape. It's uh, 10, uh, 10, 720. There's Castle, look. I think it's the Castle. And here's the start line, look. Everyone's in here. He's explaining. Official support. And it might seem a bit breezy today because we've got some different elevations. Here's the uh, warm-up look. you got to warm up your arms so when you're crawling later. You will be getting at some point, so make sure you've got some clear on, make sure you've got plenty of water. Please, at this very second, check everything in your pockets, there's nothing on the floor, you haven't dropped anything. Make sure you've got everything with you, your watches, your sunglasses, your bottles of water, whatever you want. Watch! <laughs> 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 See you later. <laughs> See you in a lot of miles. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> okay. So, uh, we're about a mile in. Uh, we're running on the roads. The roads aren't closed. Uh, this is a 60 mile an hour speed limit, so yeah, a lot of caution uh, when running here for sure. There's no banks you can sort of escape onto. See, you just can it in the road, so it's a bit of an alley challenge. So we're on Dunster Seafront right now, there's the beach, look. Tide's out right now, it's quite algae ridden and muddy. But nevertheless, it's uh, Dunster Beach. We can see Dunster Castle in the distance. Over there, it's quite hard to see. 
but yeah, we're just making our way. Uh, the road's a little bit intimidating. Uh, quite fast speed limits, nowhere to hide, but it looks a bit safe around here. Uh, we're almost two miles in. Let's keep going. So the terrain, it's quite mixed. Just went through a bit of sand. Now we're kind of on like glass, glass, grass dirt. People in their houses, look. Here's some of the sand, look. It's quite hard going. Sometimes there's a little bit of solace on the side. Uh, sometimes not. It's quite undulating. Um, but it adds to the challenge. Uh, what I didn't really account for was the hot day today. It's a pure blue sky. So we might have to back off a bit on the pace. The aid stations are quite far apart. Um, I think every 10k or so, which is actually quite far for only a 50k. Uh, they're usually a bit closer, so I brought a camel back just in case. But let's see how we get on. We're just about to catch up to the slowest uh, walkers on the first group. The 7 a.m. group because they wouldn't let me start at 7 a.m. due to the uh, yeah the mix-up with the email I got from them. We're at 4k now, as you can see here, just catching up to the walkers. It's quite a nice scenery now. Been through a lot of the uh, beach and and this path here goes all the way around the southern west tip of England. It's just over 600 miles in total. This is near the start of it. So here's our shot at the coastal path. Here's the trail. Quite hard going, there's not much spring back. But the views, the views are great. You see the beach and also the countryside. Check this out though, it's a little thin uh, corridor of a uh, hedge, seaside grass, sandy bottom, so hard going, but it's uh, quite fun though. So look at this terrain here, it's just full of sand, it's crazy huh? Feels like I'm in the desert or something. Oh, that's hard going. If you've ever done a Spartan race with the sand, in, uh, especially the Arizona one, oh, it's just like that. <laughs> it's quite interesting, actually. A little bit different. There's old Butlins, look. Minehead Butlins. We're just coming up to a hill soon. We're at almost four miles. I saw on the elevation map there's a giant hill. I presume it could be that one, but we'll see. So we're actually intersecting another race right now. There's a park run on, so it's pretty funny. I'm not sure that's happened before. I believe that's probably the hill we're climbing. So uh, yeah, see how bad it could be. There's houses here with thatch roofing. I think this is the hill. It looks very steep. So, uh, problem with hills in ultras and marathons is uh, they can drain your legs straight away just like that. And you have nothing left for the end. So, I always recommend walking them if you're unsure. That's just my tactic anyway. And then you can come out the end of it a lot faster. It's a nice walk. They weren't kidding about the hill though. <laughs> it's definitely a... Uh, definitely a toughie. 
no chance in how uh, I'm jogging up here. <laughs> we still have another 26 miles, so that was a lot of stairs and ramps and things. Um, I'm glad we walked. I feel a lot fresher now. So I think we're just going up this kind of road and then we'll tank back down the other side. It's a really nice view. You can see the ocean here. Yeah, and trees all around. It's a really nice area. There's a gentle uphill now. Uh, after the stairs, it just goes gently about half a mile or so. Uh, yeah, really nice. You can really see the ocean there. Uh, yeah, pretty fun right now. Uh, a lot of shade. <laughs> Aiming for every bit of shade as possible. It's only going to get hotter. But yeah, it's really fun. Looks nice, huh? Oh, some dirty hills. <laughs> That's where we were. Still going up. We're flying down now. There are the markers, look, those little pink triangles. You have to be really vigilant, even if you're tired. Because if you miss one, you're buggered. I think we have an aid station coming up. So here's the aid station. Exactly 10 kilometers. There's some seating, coke, bakery, and Quite nice, isn't it? So I had a nice little break there. Got some energy. I think they said it was SIS, which is kind of like Lucas said, sport or Gatorade. And now we're going to tank down towards the ocean. So we're going through the country now. It's very rocky, look, so we've got to be careful. Especially the more tired we get, we can easily roll an ankle. We're going through the countryside. So we're quite exposed. I think we have a higher 24 or 6 today at Celsius, so it's going to be hot. To the right we can see Wales, Cardiff, perhaps Newport if we squint. But yeah, we've got some nice views now, but it is hot. Some cows just there, uh, look, rubbing the trees. <laughs> so we're just following the ocean around now. We're at nine miles. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I might even see a cow in the race. That'll be funny. So there's some great views here. You can see the cows here munching, the coastal line. We're catching up to a lot of the runners now. But you can't really, you know, not stop and take it in. Anyone can run any time, but this is something you might only see once. All right. So we're coming up to 10 miles now. But it's really nice straight away. You still have to watch the floor. There's just rocks everywhere. So you have to be vigilant. Um, but the views are, oh, the views are amazing. It's just that bit kind of under Wales and before it reaches the Atlantic. Ah, uh, yeah, really nice. So it's burning downhill now. 
trying to get back some of those slow miles uphill. <laughs> Look at this, this is kind of hiking now. <laughs> it's pretty steep. <laughs> we'll find a way. It's a good trail run actually. I don't think this video will come out very well because we're kind of galloping down the hill, but stop a second, look. Amazing, isn't it? Now the, uh, find a nice bit of smooth grass now. Look at him with his sticks. Just coming down to the beach here. It's so steep coming down now with hidden rocks and all kinds of stuff. We've just been kind of galloping down and hoping we don't twist anything we got a bit lucky <laughs> so yeah we're gonna carry on this is the coastal path uh, before we start heading inland we've just done 10 miles so a third of the way there uh, not too bad actually um, the sun's getting worse but yeah we'll see how things go but yeah having a lot of fun right now Ooh, there's a little river next to us. A little river. Uh, yeah, the race. Uh, it's quite a lonely race, really. I, I think it's geared more towards walkers. You can tell that by the aid station spacing. Um, but if you're kind of jogging, running, it's, it's quite a lonely race. Um, you know, that appeals to some people. I actually enjoy it too, but sometimes it's nice just to kind of latch on to someone and let them pace you for a bit while you tune out, but maybe we'll find someone soon. There's a good British phone box though. You ain't gonna believe it if I don't show you. <laughs> There's the coast, look. I literally just broke my phone screen. I dropped my phone on these rocks. I was trying to take a picture. I just broke the screen. Luckily, I can still press it, so it's okay, but it's one of those phone screens with the rounded edges, so new screen means new phone, so that kind of... That really sucks. <laughs> oh, I'll worry about it later, I guess. So, uh, mile 13, here it is. It's really hot now, it's brutal. They really need aid stations closer together in this weather. Uh, it's a bit unsafe for the runners. Uh, we'll be there soon, at halfway. This is brutal. <laughs> it's, uh... Oh, it's rough. Rough on the ankles. Hopefully there's not too much more. <laughs> Mile 13. So it's about 800 meters on these stones. It's pretty brutal. But we're finally back on asphalt, which has pretty much barely been a mile of the race. So hopefully we can make up a bit of time here. So when the asphalt starts, immediately we have a big hill, so uh, I guess we'll have a little break. So finally, we have some shade. Uh, I think I might do a slow jog, because I think we need to enjoy it a bit and stay out the sun. But yeah, it's all a big hill right now. I hope an aid station will be at the top. I think it is in around a mile and a half time. <laughs> so we got another hill here. It's uh, pretty cool look. Very jungle-like. So we have a really big foresty uphill. It's pretty brutal actually. <laughs> oh, it's kicking my ass. But, uh, We'll get there soon, but the shade feels so nice. I think the shade, even with the hill, is better than those 
open exposed fields, especially when jogging. It's so hard, but even though this is a big hill, it just feels so much nicer. We have a beautiful stretch of downhill now. So, uh, yeah, mile 14, one more. We can uh, refill the camel back because it's empty. And uh, yeah, have a mini stretch, then uh, push on, second half. So, mile 14.2, it was such a sneaky turn off. A lot of people went the wrong way. Uh, luckily, not me for once. There's a little shack there. And uh, yeah, it was a little bit poorly marked, but uh, we got a bit lucky. <laughs> I managed to shout some of them back, so hopefully they told the others. All right, just before mile 15, the markings are terrible. In town, there was one every, you know, so-and-so, but I think they got a bit sloppy around here. I've seen so many people go the wrong way. And it's so easy to do when you're tired as well. Um, yeah, th this section needs way more markings. All right, here's the halfway point, Luke. Little seating area. It's kind of empty, actually. There's not really anyone here. So I refill the camel back. So uh, here's halfway, look. There's a little medical tent. Weird thing is, all the drinks are in the sun, so they're just warm. It would be probably better if they're inside, but never mind. At least we can get some sugar, some toilets. There's the medal for the 25 kos And then our half is just over there for the other half. But... Okay, second half, just beginning. I told them, uh, well, I suggested bring the drinks in the shade, but um, yeah, I got a lot of attitude back, so uh, never mind. <laughs> so yeah, they're, they're pretty piping hot, the Coke. Uh, it kind of sucks when you've gone all that way and you have a warm Coca-Cola, but I did try a few guys. They weren't having any of it, so there you go. Another hill. So this race, we, uh, nothing's close. Like literally cars go by 30 to 60 miles an hour. Pedestrians are shopping when you go through towns. Uh, old people are like, whoa, what the hell is going on? <laughs> um, bicycles, it's like uh, playing Paperboy on the uh, Nintendo or Commodore or whatever. Just everything's coming out. Um, <laughs> it's fun for sure, but uh, it's like no one knows this race is on apart from the racers and the organizers. So uh, it's quite interesting uh, navigating that. It's definitely unique. Uh, I'll give you that. Um, I've almost been ran over twice. Um, I imagine that wouldn't be fun for most people. Uh, I think it's. Uh, funny and interesting, but uh, yeah, everyone has an opinion on that. But, uh, so we're at mile 17 almost. We're on like a mountain bike trail, so kind of having to watch out for those uh, right now. And yeah, we're just navigating the gates and things, and yeah, onward. So these are the roads you've got to watch out for. You see there's no visibility and a car can just come ripping around here. So yeah, you have to be on the lookout at all times. Even when you're tired, which is you know kind of the hardest thing sometimes. So uh, more hills. <laughs> Quite a lot of hills. You can kind of tell more that way. Whew. Uh cramp set in, I just popped a couple of ibuprofens. Uh, 17.4 miles. Getting there. Oh man, I can't believe they had warm drinks at the aid station. Every time I have a sip. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> it just makes that 
you know, a little bit harder than it needs to be. I, you know, you've been running for 15 miles and you just want an ice cold drink just as a, a little treat. Oh boy. Anyway, let's stop dwelling over that. We'll just choke it down one foot in front of the other and uh, carry on. So we're going through a forest right now. It's quite nice really. So we've got a good shade coverage. So uh, we welcome all the shade we can get. One thing I noticed about this course is when you go uphill, there's some big slopes. You know, it's really hard going. Uh, but when you come downhill, a lot of the time they're so steep uh, with loose rocks that you can't get your pace back. You're kind of trying to be careful going down because it's a lot steeper. So it makes the course quite difficult. And I don't think that's a bad thing, really. I think it's a great challenge. Uh, your finishing time might be a bit deceptive to someone who's never run the race. But that doesn't matter. It's like a personal challenge. And definitely, it's, oh, it's a tricky course, uh, especially with the heat and the uh, lack of aid stations for the runners. But uh, we've just come down a hill and now we're going up again. So yeah, it's a, it's a good challenge, uh, course-wise. And again, yes, yeah, it's uh, some great views. It's uh, also a very lonely course. I've hardly seen anybody you know, in either direction, <laughs> Have you see, as you've seen in most of my videos. It's, it's empty, it's hard. Uh, it's nice to, you know, sort of complain about hills together with somebody. But, yeah, there's nobody here. Another thing, uh, when you go through these foresty areas, you feel a bit like a cow, because uh, there's ten flies kind of permanently swarming around your head, <laughs> trying to get your sweat. And, uh, phew, oh, they're everywhere. Uh, a lot of energy trying to fan them off, but just like the cow, I might be giving up on that soon and just let them have their way. Phew. I don't know if you can hear them. It. Yeah, damn flies. My old 19.4, still on my own, going through fields. There's some sheep, look. Some sheep, look. Oh, he's not pooing in my video. Yeah, he is. <laughs> All right. Okay, while we're walking up this little hill, uh, no phone service on a lot of the route. Uh, they say that if you get in trouble, call all these numbers. You can't get through, got zero service. I barely had any service, so a uh, bit worried because there's not many people here if something did go wrong. And uh, there's no one on the course apart from at the aid station, so... Uh, yeah, you, you might want to go with a friend or hold back a bit maybe, I'm not really sure, but yeah, just something to note. So yeah, not much room look and not where, no real place to go. So uh, yeah, just endless hills right now. I'm hoping we'll go down the other side soon. But uh, yeah, definitely a toughie. So we're at mile 20. All right, where's the course go? Ah, there it is, okay. So yeah, let's continue. Kilometer 32 for uh, any one metric with running. But we're still miles with driving here, so funny that, isn't it? So I haven't seen one single person in about 50 minutes now. No organizers, no races. I'm definitely going the right way. <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, yeah, it's a bit odd because I'm in the second wave and no one. Uh, yeah, damn, it's, it's a good job I didn't fall over because you'd just be screwed. Um, that saying, I haven't, so it's actually quite nice, you know? I can hear nature and everything, but I thought the point of a race was you kind of do your own thing, but if there's trouble or you need a drink, it's there for you. But it's definitely not the case, and I'm, I'm thinking for the entry fee, it's, it's not too great, to be honest. <coughs> um, yeah, I don't know, just a thought. So it's been seven miles since the last aid station. It's really blue, exposed. Uh, only two weeks ago we had uh, 40 degrees. And uh, yeah, this is brutal. <laughs> My camelback's empty. I haven't seen anyone. I have no phone service. Uh, there's a real risk of heat stroke. It's, uh, I've had to slow down purposely just because I have no fluids. And I'm worried because I haven't seen anybody, no racers, no organizers. And like I say, seven miles since the last aid station on a 30 mile race is, that's piss poor, isn't it? Come on. Uh, maybe a hundred miles. That makes sense. You're going slower. You're not, um, it's, it's different muscles, different energy stores. Uh, you're not going as fast. There's less risk of overheating, but uh, yeah, heat stroking creep up on you, and yeah, so I, I've slowed the pace down a bit. Uh, it's just not worth it. I've been in a situation where I was doing a race, I was sent the wrong way, and I was using the canal water to cool off because I was getting goose pimples, which is a sign of heat stroke, dizziness, confusion, and you gotta cool off, so we've slowed down a bit. We're at mile 21. Sorry, that'll be six miles since the aid station. I'm hoping there'll be one in another mile, maybe two, and then we'll go from there. Uh, this race, definitely for walkers or joggers. Uh, runners, it, really tough. You're gonna have to bring a lot of supplies to get you through, especially on this weather. and with it being so exposed like this and with the few aid stations but let's keep going uh we'll just slow down and uh we'll get there soon so i don't know if you can see there that looks like a summit of some sort we just come through all these fields and then i hope we'll start dipping down and getting out of some of this sun it's nuts but we're almost there Okay, I'm gonna assume there's an aid station up here. There's no way there's not gonna be at some point. Because, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's been way too long, so I'm gonna do a jog up and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> so here's a little summit here. Took around three uphill miles to get up, but it's quite nice views. There's where we came from, you can see. No one on there. But yeah, some really nice views. Uh, no aid station. <laughs> I'm hoping maybe there's one down here. Our first race sheep look. I don't know why it's so yellow, but there he is. So finally, we got an aid station. Coming up now. So here's the next aid station. I don't know if I remember mentioning it before, but you have a pass you have to carry around. You scan it in at everyone. That's 36k, 7.5 miles. So check it out, look, pick and mix. There they got trees, these. Cola bottles, we're gonna have to take a bag with us. We got tea and coffee, fruit, a bit of pineapple. Now this rest area, this rest area makes up for the last one. They're putting things in the shade. Um, they're just way better. I don't know what was up with the halfway one with all the drinks in the sun, but you can see they're actually thinking about it here. And they're super nice too, so. Just got a bit unlucky with the halfway point. 
but yeah they're really nice here so not much to go um yeah we're getting there we're gonna get some bigger mix so there's the hill we flew down there i went to the aid station and now we're just finishing the race another eight miles maybe just less than then we're then we're done yeah it was a good hill that was <laughs> So the people at that uh, aid station there, the uh, 22.7 mile one, <laughs> I don't know what that is in kilometers, maybe 36. Uh, yeah, really nice, really nice. It cheered me right up that I did. They knew what they were doing, they, it was just good. I uh, loaded my bag with pick and mix. Uh, a little bit greedy. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna eat that after the race. My stomach is a bit funny after downing three cups of Coca-Cola, but uh, fast sugar is, I think we'll get us there in the end. Worry about the consequences later. So yeah, um, some old chaps are downhill now, so I'm gonna turn up the speed a bit. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna tank home. And, uh, nice reward after all those hills. Right, I think someone got a bit lax with the course markings again. I'm lost again. I don't know if it was down here across here. There's no arrows. Ah, oh, that's really shit. <laughs> it's always the foresty areas. Uh, I don't know if it's the same person, but I literally have no idea where I'm going. I've been watching the whole time. Yeah, fucking hell. Let's just check here. No, no marking. Uh, Oh, fucking hell. Right, we're gonna have to go back. Okay, I'm just totally lost, aimlessly running through fields. There's no markings. There's another guy behind me there lost too. And uh, I just have no fucking idea where I'm supposed to be. Um, you can't use the app. You know, like an app. Well, you can't really walk with an app, Any run with an app anyway, but... Uh, fucking hell. This is bad. Uh, yeah, there's just no markings on any gates. We just do not know where to go. So, yeah, he doesn't know either. We're just running around. Oh, yeah, that really sucks. Basically, they put one single arrow on a thistle and someone trod on it. So the whole junction was messed up. But the path we were on was so wide you naturally follow it because it's a wide path. You don't expect to go on a tiny path like this when the only signpost is on a thistle <laughs> and someone stamped on it. So we, we didn't notice there was uh, two other guys behind me. We all went through that field to the end, no sign. Went all the way down the hill, no sign. Climbed all the way back up the hill again and just pretty much came back towards the aid station. Finally figured it out. And we're back on track, but that's, well, that's, that's 20 minutes of not getting back. It really sucks. Like I say, the, the fields and the woods, the, the trail marking is, is, is really bad. It's, sorry, but it is. The roads are good. It's just these trails, I don't know who marked them, but Christ. Oh, the sneaky old man lied to me. <laughs> okay, a couple more hills. Whew. Okay, the last video I'm making. 3% foam battery. So, five miles to go. If I die on course, because lack of aid, blistering hot sun, then it's been a pleasure. So, take care.
Hello, Sean. Hello. Good job. <laughs> I said they're in the culture. Oh my god! There's no service for half the race. Oh. And there's a seven and a half mile stretch of sunny uphill. Oh my god. Uh, I thought I was gonna die. No! I had no fun. Oh. oh my god. And there's no one around me anywhere. And I was like, this is it. I was like, oh my god. And I was so like, yeah. And I saw this cow thing in the distance. So it's just. Oh my god. I just sat down for like 10 minutes and <laughs> it's so bad, like 3 k It's not well enough. To you all. <laughs> hey husband. Hello. You look done. <laughs> <It's> too hot. <laughs> Will that fix you? Hopefully, yeah, I've got <laughs> fog. Uh, Everything. Yeah, that's a good finisher meal. I didn't really feel like any of the food. It was like a hot dog and burger. I'm like, how am I do? I want lasagna, <laughs> spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> Pretty good still, though. Oh, yeah. He's got to get it in, you know. <laughs> Can't argue with it. Aww, Piggy. <laughs> okay, so we're about recovered. They uh, they turned me into medical, gave me like 10 cups of water, but uh, we're good now. Uh, now we're going to get the Prosecco, which we missed out on when we crossed the line, so let's go get it. So here the t-shirt, select little Southwest Coast challenge. Oh yes please, Prosecco, oh, thank you. Got some Prosecco, look, there, right there. Oh. All right, uh, cheers. Alright, so yeah, we got the t-shirt, the medal, the Prosecco, and uh, yeah, that's about it. We've had our food too. So uh, yeah, we're going to head out. There's the castle, look. Bye castle. Alright, finally in this. It's like a small baby. I carried this bag about nine miles to the finish. And then another two miles back to the hotel because we were too cheap to pay for parking. Yeah, that was a good idea. It felt like a house brick in the bag, but uh, yeah, the stomach's working again. And here's the medal. He has a pair of feet on the back, well, one foot. Nice little medal.